the night, we got some news that came out of the Kremlin. Yes, it came from Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov. And he says that the problems pumping gas came about because of the sanctions Western countries introduced against our country and several companies. So all the nonsense that Nord Stream 1 was shut down for engineering works, frankly, is a load of baloney. Putin is turning the taps off. Well, one man who I sat with here, actually in the green room, six, seven weeks ago, who postulated that maybe Putin's real agenda wasn't just territorial gain in Ukraine, but it actually was an energy war, was Clive Moffat, gas consultant and former advisor to the government on energy. I hate to say it, Clive, but I think you might be right. Yes, it's... Um it's, there's been some different points of view. Siemens has said you don't need to do this, you could keep it going, and, and they've been involved in working the pipeline, Nord Stream 1. So yes, I think there is, a, obviously, there's a, there's a game playing played, and it's about sanctions. And I think inevitably that it's interesting that it takes place at this particular point in time. My, I have some relatively reliable sources in the trading area. Um, and they say that actually Russia's not actually reneged, as far as they can see, on any major gas contract right. up until now. And one wonders whether or not time has been allowed for them to get plenty of gas into storage. Um, and Hungary's just signed a new deal with Gazprom, and Germany's up to 60% of its storage capacity. It's interesting, isn't it? So, yeah. I mean, I know it's an important yeah. issue, but the point is that... Um, uh, Europe is 40% dependent on Russian gas, and now it's mostly stored up, not entirely, up to its It's interesting that over the sort of last month or two of this, of this crisis, you know, the Germans and others have been building up their gas reserves in case things get tough in the winter. We, of course, can't do that. No, no, we, we don't have that luxury because we only have two days of storage, so it's rather academic. So really, just, you just, we are... We are <laughs> you can't <laughs> believe... Well, we, we shouldn't be laughing, really. Yeah, no, no, we're dependent on the weather... And also the fact that uh, maybe there's going to be plenty of LNG in the first quarter of next year available when we need it. Um, and this is one of the issues that leads into the, the current initiative being discussed. Yes. So we've got, and by the way, Wendy Morton just been announced as chief whip, so we'll keep you up to date with all the developments in Downing Street. So, Clive, she is going, we're pretty certain, she's going to put a cap on the wholesale price of gas. That is what she's going to do. Uh, the speculation is that'll last between now and the next general election, so it could be two years yeah. of doing it. Yeah. That is quite a big blank check, isn't it? It's huge. It's potentially very big. Um, the decision, theoretically, theoretically, is that if you cap wholesale gas prices in the UK, yep. then you will effectively help um, help forestall the increase in the retail energy cap at the same time of help industry that buys gas directly from the wholesale market. That's in theory. The, the problem with this is threefold. One is that it's a blanket measure and everybody benefits to the same extent. So that we, it's not really focused or targeted no. at the people who really need it. But it's easy to do easy to do. Yeah. Well, it's actually quite complicated to do because you're talking about a lot of contracts between shippers, suppliers okay. and so on and so forth. Um, so it's, it's, it's not targeted. And the other problem is that it doesn't allow the market to work in a sense that if the cap was allowed to increase slightly, there could well be some reduction in consumer demand as consumers start to yeah. sort of do some. And it's not beyond possibility that 10 percent of consumer demand could be saved through, uh, through market responsiveness. And if you don't have that, by doing this, to some extent, you forestall that market effect. And what you do is perhaps prolong the level of high level of gas prices in the UK longer than they need mm. to be have the market's been allowed to work. My third issue with this one is, and it's not being talked about, is the risk to supply. Let's assume that the Qataris want to sell gas when we desperately need it at £10, or £15 a therm, and, we, and the shippers say, well, well we won't, we've got a cap. 
and the cap plus the subsidy we've been taking, which is JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs, <laughs> would say, uh, I'm afraid it's not enough, can't do the deal. And the Qatari supplier will say, I'm sorry, we'll take it to China. So we could end up in a situation where, Gosh. I've mentioned before, that the, we are not immune to energy rationing. And there's no guarantee that this incredible, expensive scheme would actually underpin supply security. No, and supply, she's mentioned supply as a word. As a word, nothing. Um, last quick question. In a real emergency, could we use places like Drax to start burning coal again in a real emergency. I think we're going to have to. My, 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 my contacts have told me that um, engineers at Drax who were really involved in coal production, coal generation, yep. have been called back to advise about restarting and getting the plants back to using imported coal to generate electricity. I understand from grid or through the uh, that in fact measures have been taken or discussed to actually underpin uh, payments, uh, emergency payments to fossil fuel generators like okay, so, so things are happening. Interesting. Clive, as ever, fascinating, worrying, but fascinating.